Cousin, what's going on, sir? <laughs> God bless you. Peace and blessings. Oh wow, praise God. They got a go live feature. Peace and blessings. Praise God. Surprise anybody got on. I was like, let me see if somebody get on. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Happened to the days when they, they used to have Bibles in the hotel. I guess they don't keep Bibles in there anymore. Huh? Praise God. <clears throat> so listen, I was just going to drop. I was going to just talk a couple of minutes about something. You know. I was going to talk a minute about having faith. Having faith. What does it mean to have faith? I don't even know. Who sent me a thumb? That's a blessing. I got a thumb. Praise God. I got two live people. Amen. see something <laughs> let me let me see how this works I don't even know how to work this stuff amen let me see <laughs> no answer that's crazy amen Cousin, I've been um I've been doing some studying behind you, man. I don't know if you're still on or not. I've been I've been doing some studying behind you, beloved. So, all the people that you've been recommending, I've been following them. Uh, the white guy with the beard, Sister Dina. I watched a few of her videos. It was a blessing. I appreciate your recommendation. It was very interesting. I don't know. It's probably where I'm at. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm in Cape May, New Jersey, so. Anyway, yeah, man, it's been it's been very uh it's been information that's been very enlightening. <clears throat> I don't know, cousin, if you is, <laughs> if you expected me to follow up and teach on any of that, bro, I don't know. That's not my portion, but it's great information. But I want to talk about faith. You know, the Bible says that without faith is impossible to please God. You know, 
I was doing, a, I was reading John chapter 4. So John chapter 4 is where I'm coming from. It's going to be John chapter 4. I believe verse 44 to the end. And I don't even have a Bible in front of me. So you can read it. And I'm just going to paraphrase and flow from it. But I was really thinking about this for the last couple of days, you know, about faith. And the Holy Spirit was really ministering to me concerning believers and having faith simply. Um, I've been noticing something about God. I've been noticing something about God. And that God, God isn't necessarily in what people think that he's in like you know we know the story of Elijah where the Bible says that he looked for God he looked for the word of God or the prophetic revelation of God in the winds and he didn't receive it it was, he thought it might be in the earthquake but it wasn't there but he found himself in a still place in a quiet place and um, that's where he heard the still small voice of God. And I've been noticing God that God, for me personally, I, I haven't found him uh, in places where it seemed like it's a lot of movement and it's a lot of commotion and it's a lot of activity. But I've been finding God in a very low place, in a very humble place. I've been finding God close to repentance, close to mercy, um, close to sincerity. I've been finding God in a still, quiet place. And even as I say that, I'm reminded of Moses. You know, Moses uh, was a warrior. He was a general. He was trained in under Egypt to be a general. He was skilled in warfare by... Egypt and also by God but the interesting thing about Moses is Moses had a vice and it was his anger it was his anger now it's interesting because in the Bible God gave Moses a testimony that he was the meekest man on the face of the earth which means that he was very balanced and he had the ability to keep his emotions uh, under control he was very even killed but yet we see in several occasions in the scripture where he had an issue with anger uh, we see him throwing the tablets of stone down in anger we see him smiting the rock when the almighty instructed him to speak to the rock and we know that we know that hindered him you know God uh, did not allow Moses to enter into the dimension that God called them to the promised land the next dimension the promised place the expected in the destiny that God had for them Moses himself even though he was leading God's people and was called of God and was anointed of God and empowered by God and handpicked selected by God he did not enter in he did not possess the land that God called him to possess. He did not enter into the dimension that God prepared for him to enter into. Why? Because he had a vice. And his vice was anger. He had a stronghold of anger. He was challenged uh, with anger and frustration with God and also with God's people. But the thing I want to talk about that is not even focus on the anger. The fact that it was something, a vice in his life, that he did not receive full deliverance of. That he did not yield before God. That he, that he was not able to control. That hindered him from entering in. It was a vice that called his spirit to be violent at times. To be out of control it was a vice that caused him to be aggressive aggressive confrontational um come on man it was a vice that caused him to be confrontational 
uh, it was a vice that caused him to be violent with anger. And it and and God didn't afford him the privilege of entering into the promised place. All right. I also think about David. You know, David was a mighty, mighty warrior. He was a champion in the spirit. We know that he was a hero of the faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11. David was a man that was declared to be after God's own heart. Many of us admire David, the psalmist. Many of us admire David, the worshiper that danced before the Lord. Under the Holy Spirit. Many of us admire David. Because even as a young man. He had faith to slay a giant. Many of us admire David the prophet. But one thing about David is. He desired to build God something in the earth. He desired to build God something. Where God's glory would inhabit consistently. He wanted to build God a house. And the funny thing about it is, God said that David could not build his house. God would not allow David, a man after his own heart, a hero in the faith, a worshiper, a psalmist, and a prophet, and a king that God picked himself. God would not let him build the temple. Why? Because God said that you have too much blood on your hands. David was a warrior, fought many battles, but God allowed that. God said that David somewhere will be able to build the temple. I'm going somewhere, just follow me. He said that his son will be able to build the temple. That in a time of war, God would not let his, a, a dwelling place for his presence be built. But instead, it was in a time of peace that God permitted Solomon to build a habitation where his presence cannot just visit but rest. And I say that because you see the pattern of God with Moses and with David. Two men that are as highly favored in the eyes of Adonai. That God did not permit to enter into a next dimension. David was not allowed to build something that God's presence would in God's glory would inhabit. Moses was not able to enter into the dimension that God chose for him, the promised place of destiny that God chose for him. Why? Because both of them were aggressive warriors. Okay, they were bo both aggressive, confrontational, and they were warriors. And because of that, God did not let them enter in. And I'm saying that because as I've been thinking about this, I've been noticing that, you know, we like to quote scriptures, you know, the violent taketh by force. But it's, it's not it's not those that are violent in faith that's going to enter into the next dimension like. It's not those that always want to fight spiritual warfare and fight demons all the time that are, that are going to be able to enter in and build what it is that God wants to be built so, his, so it can be a habitation for His glory. It's going to be those that know how to operate from a place of peace. It's going to be those that know how to operate from a place of lowliness. It's those that know how to wait on the Lord and be still before God that are going to enter into the next dimensions like that are going to enter into the places that have been prepared for you that are going to build places that can become a habitation for God's glory. So I just wanted to share that but what I really wanted to talk to you about is faith. Now what I notice with, with believers is that we can be very, very carnal. Like, we could just be very carnal. We could be very carnal. I can't even see nothing, so. Faith in the ancient world is a woman carrying a child. 
Amen. He said, I'm following you. Amen. I like that. Faith in the ancient world is a woman carrying a child. Amen. And that's going to bring me to the point I want to bring. like, Because what I notice about believers, we can be very carnal, like sensual, like we so connected to what we see and feel that we start to build build our relationship or build our identity with God based on experiences. Based on experiences. Now I love to experience things with God. Like I love to experience his presence. I love when God showed me things. I love when he speak. I love when supernatural things happen. Powerful things happen by the Holy Spirit. It's awesome. But what I notice with believers is we like to build our relationship and our connection with God based on experiences in the natural. And then we, when we do that, we start to say things that don't even make sense. Like we'll be at, we'll be at a worship event. We'll be at a church event. We'll be at a, 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 an event where believers congregate and come before God to worship and celebrate our God. And believers that say something like this. I don't praise unless I feel it. You know. Unless the man of God pray for people and they fall down like. You're not going to worship like. You know. You're not going to bear witness to what is going on. Unless you see something happen in the natural. The man of God got to lay hands on people and they fall down for you to believe in anointing is present like. You got to feel a tingly sensation upon you for you to lift your hands and worship God. Like you got to wait to see something to prove that God is present for you to lift your hands and bless him with the fruit of your lips. And if you do that, you carnal like you might be listening to what I'm saying right now. and Say, you know what? I don't know about him. I don't feel nothing. If you got to feel something to receive, then graft the word of God. You carnal, like you straight carnal, like, and it's not just my, it's just not my estimation. It's God's estimation, like God look at you as God look at this as being carnal, because if we don't feel nothing, see nothing happen, or we not impressed by nothing, then we won't be moved to demonstrate faith in God. We won't be moved to worship. We won't be moved to give, like, cause we carnal. And then we start to develop our, our walk with God based off some type of feeling or goosebumps or experience that we can feel. And if you don't feel nothing, then you can't connect with God. That means that you car no. And I say that because Jesus said in John chapter 4, starting at 44 to the end. It's serious like, unless you feel something, you won't worship God. You carnal like. Unless you see something happen in the service, then you won't demonstrate faith and come into agreement with what God is doing. Like you carnal, and that's why we don't experience that as much of God as we like to, because our faith is depicted upon and is connected to us feeling something or seeing something. Now this is John chapter four. I'm gonna start at verse forty-four and I'm gonna go through. All right. Now. The story is a story of Jesus and he ministered to a nobleman, right? He, Jesus was in Capernaum and he ministered to a nobleman. And the nobleman said that Jesus, you know, my son is sick and he about to die. Like, and he was, he was inquiring of Jesus if he could do something. And Jesus made a statement. He says, unless you believe, uh, he said, unless you see, you won't believe. You won't believe unless you see stuff. Without signs and wonders, you won't believe. And it's true of people today, like, without some type of sign that gives evidence that Jesus is doing something or that Jesus is present, we won't believe. We won't demonstrate faith. But the conundrum with that is that believing and faith is something spiritual, like, is not something natural. It's something spiritual. Now, just follow me. I'm about to break down what I'm about to say. Believing in God is something spiritual. Okay. Now in John chapter 4 verse 44. 
the man came to Jesus and asked Jesus, could he do something about his son like that was about to die? And Jesus told him, go thy way. You know, your son lives. He's going to be made whole. I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the scriptures in front of me. He told him, go thy way. Your son live. He's going to be made whole. Now, where, where Jesus spoke with the nobleman, the Bible says that it was a day's journey away from where he lived, like away from where his son is. So when he's in the presence of Jesus, Jesus speaks a word to him. And the Bible says that the man believed Jesus' words. Now, the funny thing about it is when he's having an encounter with Jesus, there's no goosebumps. There's no glory. There's no fire making him fall down or anything like he had nothing. He had no sign, no evidence of anything that Jesus said had come to pass. Only thing he had was Jesus word like he didn't have a feeling. He didn't have a warmth come over him. He didn't have goosebumps. He didn't have something in his chest that bear witness to what Jesus said. Only thing he had was Jesus word. That's it. And the Bible says that he believed that. He believed that. Now, before I go break that down any further, I want to just break something down about faith. You know? Faith. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. And I was sharing this with a brother recently. You got to understand how faith works. Okay? Okay? We have to understand how faith work. And I'm not saying these things of my own estimation. I'm saying these things because Jesus taught us how to have faith. In Mark chapter, um, Mark chapter 12 verse 22 to 24. He taught us how to have faith. He taught us how to speak the things that we believe. like, And cause it to come into manifestation. Now I'm going to break down how faith works. Another example in the scripture, I believe, is Mark, Matthew, I think, 16. And it's with the centurion man. And the centurion man came to Jesus and asked Jesus to, you know, to, that his daughter was sick. And he was inquiring of Jesus if he can do something. And Jesus desired to go to the centurion's house. But the centurion stopped Jesus and said, listen, you don't need to go to my house. All you have to do is speak a word. Because I understand that you a man of authority. That all you have to do is send a word. That's all you have to do. I'm a man of authority. And I say to this one, do that. And I say to this one, do that. And I know that if I say do this, that my servants are accomplished of everything that I send them to accomplish. Without me ever seeing it. And I know that you're a man of authority too. So all you have to do is send a word and I know my daughter will be healed. I'm paraphrased because I don't have a scripture in front of me. Now Jesus says something interesting. Jesus said that he didn't see anybody in all of Israel, all the prophets, all the disciples, all the religious Pharisees and priests and high priests, the people that studied Torah, the people that was in the word of God. The people that seen God do miracles, signs and wonders. Jesus said that this centurion guard had greater faith than anybody that he ever saw in Israel at that time. Why would Jesus give this man a testimony of having so great a faith? What was taking place that Jesus accounted his faith to be so great? Jesus said, I haven't seen so great a faith. But the interesting thing, when I did a study on that word faith in the Greek, it means have to have confidence and to have understanding of how things work. So Jesus said, I haven't met anybody in all of Israel that have confidence in their understanding of how things work. Faith. Jesus said that for this man to have faith was for him to have confidence and have understanding of how things work. I know that's the truth because it bear witness with what the man said. The man said that he, he he's a man of authority and he know how it works. Hold on.
Man, I'm in this hotel room cooking. The heat on 80. Hallelujah. So how does faith work? The Bible says that faith worketh by love. So faith works. There is a work of faith. Like There is a way that faith has activity in your life. Like There is a way. So how is that way? Hold up. I, I'm about to just break this down. And the reason I just felt led to break it down because, you know, we be saying stuff like I keep saying stuff and nothing has happened. I keep praying and nothing has happened. I keep speaking the word of God and nothing is happening. Well, that's impossible. That's impossible for you to be in prayer and nothing happens. Like that's impossible for you to speak the word of God and nothing happened. It's impossible. Like that's impossible. That's impossible for us to stand on God's word and nothing happened. That's impossible. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said that nothing is impossible with God. So there's no way that you're walking with God. You're speaking God's word. You're in agreement with God and prayer. And nothing, nothing is an impossible result to get. Nothing is impossible with God. It's only two things in the scripture that's impossible with God. And that's lying and nothing. They're impossible. Okay? So, 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 when we say stuff like this, it shows and proves that we don't understand how faith works. And I'm going to get back to my text, but let me break it down. Look how God operated in the beginning. God created everything with his word. Okay? Now, it's a difference it's different for something to be created and for something to be made. Those two different things. Okay? I'm a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, "Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature." But yet when I accepted Christ, I still had the same scars in my hand before I accepted. I still had the same scar on my lip. I still had the same scars all over my body. Like I still had the same body. Like I still had the same mind. I still had some of the same sinful tendencies. I still had some of the same strongholds. But the Bible declared that I'm a new creation. Like how does that make sense? If all things become new, what is he talking about? Creation is a spiritual word. Like Creation is a spiritual word. Okay. So when we, so when I became a new creation, I became a new creature. My spirit man was made new, even though my flesh is still corrupt, is still corruption like. My flesh is going to be made new on the day that Jesus come back to receive us. Bible says when this flesh, this corruption puts on incorruption. So my spirit was the new creation. Creation, crea something being created is a spiritual term. All right. Just follow me for a second. This is going to bless y'all if y'all be patient with me. Now creation is a spiritual term. When something is created, when God creates something, he created in the spirit. But when God makes something, he make it in the natural. Okay. To create something means that something has to come from nothing like that's creation. Okay. But to make something, you have to take things that already exist and bring them together to make something. Okay, so now when God made man, before he made man, he created you first. He created man in the spirit and then he made man out of the dust of the ground. Okay, when he made you, what did he do? He took elements that was already created and combined them. He took the dirt like he took his divinity and he took the spiritual you that he created in the spirit first. So when he breathed the breath of life, the new more, he breathed the spirit that was you. That was the that was the created version of you. He took his divinity, 
He took the created version of you. He took dirt that he created and then he brought it together and he made man. Okay. All right. Just follow me because I'm about to break something down about faith. Let me validate it with this. In John chapter one, verse one, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Who is the word of God? Jesus Christ. The Bible says by him, all things was created. Okay. So we know Abba God, Adonai, the father, he, he created everything with his words. He created everything with Jesus. Jesus is an agent of creation. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay. So the word of God is in the beginning with God in the spirit. OK, the creativity of God's word is in the spirit. But Jesus said that we're praying that father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we don't want the word of God. We don't want the promises of God to be in heaven with God. Like we don't want the we don't want just to have our blessings in spiritual places in heavenly places. But we want it on earth as it is in heaven. That's what God did. God sent his son to earth. OK, he sent his word to heal. He sent his word to accomplish something in earth. And he said that his word would not return back void. So in John chapter one, it says that in, in the beginning was the word and it was with God. But John chapter one, verse 14, it says something unique. It said that that word that was in the beginning with God was made flesh. It was made flesh. So it had to materialize into the natural realm and then and then it says in john and we beheld it so it, it was in a, a visible place with god but it had to materialize and be made into flesh where it can be seen i'm about to teach you just something about faith because you think nothing is happening because you don't see it you think nothing is happening because you don't feel it because you don't understand how faith works. you carnal but faith is something that creates something in the spirit and then cause it to be made in the natural. So just because you don't see something doesn't mean that something is not happening. Like something is happening. OK, so the reason we don't see things happen is because we don't understand how things are made. We for something to come in the natural, it has to be made into the flesh. The word has to be made flesh, but for the word to be made flesh, it has to draw from something that's already exists to make something. You have to draw from resources that already exist. So a lot of us, we're not seeing the word made flesh, but because we're not creating environments to draw for manifestation, like we're not creating environments with God's word. That's what God did. God created things in the spirit by speaking it first and then it manifests in the natural. God said, let there be light. Let this happen. Let this happen. And as he began to speak, his words created something in the spirit and then it, it, it became flesh. It manifests to the natural. That's how it happened. That's what he did with Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus, the, the word of God, the, the creational agent of God was in heaven in the spirit with God. But then it, 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 it became flesh. It was made flesh. And that's how the word of God is manifested in your life. That's how the promises of God are manifested in your life. That's how signs and wonders and miracles is manifested in your life. But you waiting to feel goosebumps to know that something's happening. You waiting to feel a fire in you to realize that these things can happen. Like, But we need to Im be imitators of God and demonstrate faith that Jesus taught us to demonstrate. Jesus said that we need to speak our faith like he said, if you say to a mountain, it'll move. Why? Because we're, we're imitating our father. We're doing the same thing that our father do. We're using our words to create something in the spirit so that it can manifest in the natural like 
That's why we worship God and declare that he's good. Declare he's a healer. Declare his name into the atmosphere. Why? Because it creates a realm around us that God can inhabit and cause these promises to manifest in your life. But you keep saying that your word's not doing nothing. You keep saying nothing is happening because you don't see something, but something is happening. Like your faith and your words are creating something in the spirit. So it can be made flesh like it can materialize into the natural like. All right. Now, I'm a validated with John chapter four because Jesus, this man didn't he didn't feel anything. He didn't see anything like he had no evidence, no sign of what Jesus said had come to pass. All he had was Jesus word that was spoken and he believed that. Now he had a day's journey where he what he met Jesus and Jesus gave him the word. He had to walk a complete 24 hours until he got to his destiny. And all he had at that time was a word that Jesus said like he didn't see anything happen. But he went his way trusting in what Jesus said would come to pass. Now when he was on his journey the Bible says that two of his servants they came to him and they said, "Listen, master, your son, he he's he lives. He's made whole. He's now listen. He's on a journey to see the manifestation of what Jesus said is done. All he have is a word to hold on to, but he didn't see anything yet. Jesus told him it's done. Then while he's still on his journey to see the manifestation, his servants came and confirmed it. They said, listen, your son, he's better. He's made whole. He lives. He still hasn't seen it yet. But now God is sending confirmation. They're saying the same thing Jesus did. That's confirmation. Amen. That's confirmation. He still didn't see anything yet. And then he, now watch this. This is the point I love. The, 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 it said, the Bible says that the man began to inquire when did he begin to amend. It didn't say when he was healed. It doesn't say when he was made whole. The man inquired and said, when did my son begin to amend? Now that word amend means to get better over time. So, Whatever took place in his, in his son, it wasn't something immediate. It's something that, <clears throat> that was working in him over time. He started to get better. like, And he asked, when did this start to happen? When did my son start to get better? And they told him it was around yesterday, around seven, the seventh hour. And the Bible says that the man realized that that was the same time that Jesus spoke the word to him that his son was made whole like. Now to me this story is so powerful because it illustrates how faith works. This man believed the word of the Lord like. He believed the word that Jesus declared even though he didn't see anything manifested. He went on his journey. He went on his way. Even though he didn't feel nothing, he didn't see anything. But he believed God's word. And soon as Jesus spoke that word, it was working on his son. Even though he didn't see it happening, it was it was already performing that which it was sent to accomplish. Like it was already beginning to perform healing on his son. It was already beginning to restore his son. So just because you don't see anything doesn't mean that the word of God isn't working like doesn't mean that God isn't working doesn't mean that the angels aren't aren't, aren't fulfilling the assignment that your words were spoken to do like it doesn't mean it like just because you don't see it like it's working. God said that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish the thing that he sent it to accomplish. It would accomplish it like. But where is God's word? The Bible says that the word of God is nigh us. It's even in our mouths. So as God's children and God's ambassadors, he's given us the authority and the privilege to speak his word with the same power that it had when he spoke it.
So when we speak God's word, something is created like when we speak God's word, it initiates something in the spirit realm. When we speak God's word, it creates an environment in which his promises can be manifested in your everyday life in a place where you can see it and behold it like. So we got to come from a place of being so carnal like. We have to see it or feel goosebumps to know that God is doing something. We got to come to a place where we strong in faith. We got to come to a place where we demonstrate faith the way Jesus taught us to demonstrate faith. This is the way that Jesus taught us to demonstrate faith. <coughs> Jesus taught us how to have faith like this. And I don't think that it's wise to listen to anybody over Jesus Christ himself like. Why are you laughing at me? My cousin laughing at me, y'all. Alright. So if we really want to see God demonstrate himself in our lives, like, and we really want to see the kingdom of God manifested, like, and we really want to see signs and wonders and miracles like. Then we got to demonstrate the faith the way that Jesus taught us how to do it like. We have to demonstrate the faith simply the way Jesus taught us. We, we have to really come to a place to not be Hebraic roots. Black Israelite. Baptist. Pentecostal, but be sons of God, like, and do the same things that Jesus did, like, this what really bothers me, right, this what really boggles my mind, and my cousin laughing at me, he gotta go, but I'm about to talk about him, I'm about to talk about everybody, like, this what really bothers me about believers, because believers, you follow everything else but Jesus, you don't make no sense, like, you don't make no sense like you follow everything else but Jesus like it, that, it just doesn't make any sense to me like we follow Moses. We follow the Old Testament. We follow all these people that's coming up with these theologies and theories about stuff when the Bible simply says it simply why we can't just follow Christ. We got to be extra biblical and go into all these other books to find out information. And we can't even just simply follow Jesus like we got to teach everybody else principles and theories, but we can't even teach the things that Jesus taught like. We religious man and we Pharisees, man, you Pharisees for doing that, man. I praise God for all these other revelations. But if you're not teaching the things that Jesus taught, you out of line, you out of order like and you teaching false doctrine, period. Period. Like Jesus said, come and follow me. If any man will continue in my word, like it's just amazing. It's, it's astounding to me. Like we listen to all these other preachers. We follow the Torah. We follow the feast days. We are trying to follow all this stuff and, and we don't even follow Jesus. That's what we supposed to do. We supposed to follow Christ like. We teach what everybody else say, but we don't even teach the things that Jesus taught. Like, I don't understand that as believers. Like, it boggles my mind. Like, it boggles my mind. It boggles my mind. We all divided. We got all these different denominations. Everybody more right than the other ones. And it's a bunch of Pharisees. Like, a bunch of religious Pharisees, man. Bunch of religious Pharisees, man. Seriously, man. Like the body of Christ, something got to change, man. Seriously, like something really has to change, man. Because the way we be moving, it's not attractive, like it's not attractive. You a black Israelite, you spend all this time smashing the rest of the believers in the churches. How they doing everything right, wrong. You into Hebraic roots, you swear you got so much revelation and you know more about God than anybody, like. But we, I don't hear about nobody getting delivered. No lesbians coming to your light. No, no, I don't see nobody getting delivered. What are signs and wonders and miracles like? 
Everybody bragging about how their faith in God is so perfect and their revelation in God is so perfect. But we don't even see the manifestations of, of the things that Jesus did. Where's the greater works? Where's the greater works? Where is the greater works that Jesus said that we would do? Like Jesus said, if you believe on him, as the scripture has said, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water like. This is what he said. He said, if you believe on him as the scripture has said, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. So if, if out of our bellies, river, rivers of living water is not flowing, then there's something wrong with our faith. Jesus said that signs and wonders will follow those that believe. These signs will follow them that believe. So if these signs aren't following us, then it's a problem with our faith. It's a problem. Real talk. And I don't care what denomination you're from. Like, I don't care how long you've been studying. Like, I don't follow Torah. Like, I don't read Maccabees. Like, I don't do none of that. Like, I just follow Jesus. That's it. Like, I just follow his teachings. Like, I try to teach the same things that Jesus taught. Like, I'm a disciple of Jesus. Like, I'm not a disciple of all these other people. Like, I'm not trying to be a Jew. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be Jew. I'm not trying to be an Israelite. Like, I'm not trying to be none of that. I'm trying to be the son of God that God called me to be because that's what Jesus said that I am. Like, I'm trying to be a disciple of Christ. I'm trying to be a disciple of Christ. I'm trying to learn how to have faith the way Jesus did. Like, I want my life to look like Christ. Like, I'm trying to be conformed to the image of his son, not the image of Moses, not the image of a Jewish person, like not the image of a theologian. Like, I'm not trying to be none of that, man. I'm really not like. And I'm spazzing because my cousin is laughing because I'm teaching the same things that Christ is teaching. Like. This is stuff that Jesus taught. I, I just don't be understanding as believers in Christ. I really don't. So anyway, that's all I had to share. I just wanted to share that about faith. You know what I'm saying? And I pray that it encouraged somebody. I pray that it strengthened somebody's faith. I pray that it helps somebody's faith grow. I pray, that it, I pray that people begin to see real manifestations of the things that Jesus said that we should see like. It's just crazy, like, we doing all this studying and not seeing nobody get healed, like. We reading all this historical data and we not, not seeing no demons get cast out, like. Jesus never told you to read all that historical data, like. He never told you to do that, like. He never told you to read Maccabees. He never told you to do none of that stuff, man. He never told us to do these things, like. He never told us to be historians and all that, like. If that's what you are, praise God. But what he told us to do was heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, like, and preach the kingdom, like. That's what he said. He told us to preach the kingdom, not preach the Old Testament, like. He told us to preach the kingdom, like. That's what he told us to preach. He, that's what he told us to preach. How come nobody can yeah. How come everybody teaching all this historical data and all this stuff? Who all this stuff? How come people teaching all these lessons out the Bible, but they not casting out no devils? Like, how come so many people got a great revelation of God beyond anybody else, but you're not healing the sick? You're not healing the sick. You keeping feast days, but you're not healing the sick. You're trying to keep the Sabbath, but you're not casting out devils. Like, I'm not knocking keeping the Sabbath. I'm not knocking feast days. You focus on keeping days, but Jesus told us to cast out devils. Like, that's what our Lord and Savior told us to do and gave us the power to do. That's what he told us to do. You see what I'm saying? So people want to laugh and mock me because I really want to follow Jesus and do the things that he told me to do. Like he told me to cast out devils. He told me to heal the sick 
And then he taught us how to have faith to see those things happen. Like he taught us how to do it. He taught us how to do it, but we're more interested in having more knowledge than other people than actually following Christ and being Christ-like. And actually having transforming power, like, to transform the environments around us for real. Peace and blessings. Yeah, man, because, like, Seriously, like, all is we too religious as the body of Christ. We too religious, like, you know. We too religious, like, you know. We we like the Pharisees, man, in the body of Christ, and that that just goes all over. You know, we search in the scriptures, and in in them we think we have the eternal life. We think we got the revelation, but it's not translating to no power. Nobody getting transformed. Nobody coming to our light. No kings coming to our light. You know what I'm saying? No people. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Have faith in God. Peace and blessings.